There are estimated to be just under 150 nuclear submarines in the world. This small number is due to the high cost of building them, which can exceed $3 billion. But how are submarines actually built? To find out, let's travel to the United Kingdom and visit a shipyard dedicated to constructing nuclear submarines. The history of submarines begins in the 17th century, when Cornelis Drebbel, a Dutch inventor, built a rudimentary wooden and leather submarine in 1620 that could dive a few meters into the River Thames. It was a modest but revolutionary beginning. In the 18th century, David Bushnell introduced the Turtle, a small submarine designed for attacks during the American Revolutionary War. Although its missions were not successful, it marked the start of the military use of submarines. The 19th century brought industrial advances like steam propulsion and compressed air with notable models such as Robert Fulton's Nautilus and Narcis Monturiol's Ictineo. The true rise came in the 20th century during the World Wars, with submarines like the German U-boats, known for their ability to operate in secrecy and strike enemy fleets. Since then, these vessels have evolved with nuclear propulsion and functions ranging from scientific exploration to modern military strategy. So, how exactly is a nuclear submarine built? The construction of nuclear submarines in Barrow in Furness, a shipyard with a long tradition in the United Kingdom, is a complex and specialized process. This shipyard builds submarines for the Royal Navy that can operate for 25 years without refueling thanks to their nuclear reactors. Each submarine involves thousands of skilled workers, from electricians to engineers, who work together to ensure every system functions properly. The shipyard is not only crucial for national defense, but also a major economic force in the region, creating thousands of jobs. Building these submarines requires cutting-edge technology and materials designed to resist corrosion, withstand immense pressure, and ensure safety during combat missions. Everything begins with a team of experts who monitor every detail, working in extreme conditions to ensure these steel giants can handle the toughest challenges at sea. The design phase is a monumental task involving over 600 specialists. A submarine is one of the most complex machines ever built, with 400,000 kilometers of wiring, 25,000 valves, and more than a million components. The design is done entirely with computer models and takes years to complete before being physically constructed. The construction process starts with working on the steel. Massive steel plates arrive at the shipyard where magnetic cranes position them and plasma cutting machines shape them with precision. These pieces are then assembled to form the hull of the submarine, which is later coated to withstand the extreme conditions of the ocean. The hull is divided into eight massive steel sections, each measuring 11 meters in diameter. Once assembled, these sections are transported through public roads to the final assembly building known as Devonshire Dock Hall, one of the largest structures in Britain. This building, 200 meters long, is the heart of the shipyard and the place where the submarine takes its final form. The assembly of each piece is a remarkable process. The submarine sections are initially placed vertically to make work easier, then carefully rotated into their final position. This is done using specialized cranes that perform extremely precise maneuvers, where a single mistake could be catastrophic. Every component must fit perfectly into place. Inside, the submarine is a complex maze of technology. It contains three times more equipment than a surface ship. Most of the space is taken up by the nuclear reactor, diesel engines, and backup systems, designed to allow the crew to survive underwater for weeks without resurfacing. If the reactor fails, diesel generators kick in, though this would be a critical situation if it happened far out at sea. One of the most crucial aspects of these submarines is stealth. To avoid detection, everything is mounted on advanced vibration damping systems, making them the quietest submarines in the world. Their passive sonar is so sensitive it can hear a ship in New York from Southampton. Continuing along the production line, the submarine sections are moved with incredible precision. For instance, the front end, which weighs 270 tons, contains the sonar. The rear end, weighing 230 tons, holds the rudder and the propeller. Each section moves slowly, only about one meter per minute, but every movement is executed with millimeter precision, 
supervised by a team of seasoned experts with decades of experience. Building a submarine is an extremely detailed process, and one of the most important parts is the command deck. This area, which functions as the submarine's control room, is built independently in a different section of the shipyard before being integrated into the main hull. The command deck is 72 feet long and weighs nearly 400,000 pounds. Inside, it houses navigation controls, sonar systems, communications equipment and weapons. This makes it the true brain of the submarine. At the top of the module is the captain's cabin, the only private space on board. Below it, on the second level, are the common areas, a small modern kitchen, spaces for the crew to rest and a room for preparing meals. Even though space is limited, sailors must adapt to these conditions. Compared to older submarines, the comfort has improved significantly. Now, crew members have access to device chargers and other conveniences that didn't exist before. The technology inside the command deck is cutting edge. The sonar, essential for detecting and analyzing the underwater environment, has its own space for processing data and sending it to the control systems. Every detail in this module is designed to ensure efficient communication between all areas of the submarine. At the rear of the command deck are the crew rest areas, divided between junior and senior ranks. There is also the galley, equipped with everything needed to prepare meals that will keep the crew healthy and energized during long missions. Joining all the submarine sections is a highly complex task that demands extreme precision. Once the various parts are ready, the welding team takes over. This process involves welding over a mile of metal just to connect two sections. It takes weeks of continuous work in day and night shifts to ensure that each part is perfectly sealed and solid. Welding inside a submarine is extremely demanding and requires great skill and endurance. The spaces are very tight, forcing workers to maneuver in uncomfortable positions. Temperatures can reach 260 degrees Fahrenheit, which adds to the challenge. The welders have to work in perfect sync because every weld must be flawless. They handle their tools so naturally that gas flows with a single trigger pull and the heat melts the metal to create seamless bonds. This process is critical because even a minor error can be logged and, worse, could put lives at risk. Once the internal welding is complete, the team moves on to the submarine's exterior. But the process doesn't stop there. Each weld goes through rigorous testing to ensure there are no flaws. They use advanced technology like ultrasound, similar to medical scanners, to inspect inside the joints. Mechanical tests are also conducted to check the strength of each weld. These procedures ensure that the joints are even stronger than the submarine's own metal. The shipyard also has a team of scientists and engineers constantly developing new materials and innovative techniques. They perform tension and impact tests to confirm that every part meets the highest standards. This is essential since a submarine is made of more than one million pieces, all of which must be assembled by hand by a team of fewer than 300 workers. A key aspect of submarine construction is the installation of the PAM cabin which contains monitors that detect dangerous gases like argon. These monitors are vital for worker safety, as argon can be deadly in high concentrations. On the outside, the submarine is covered with 40,000 rubber tiles. This outer layer serves two main purposes. It helps make the submarine invisible to enemy radar and improves acoustic insulation, making it much quieter underwater. All of this contributes to making the submarine a highly efficient, stealthy and extremely precise machine. Building a submarine like the Astute is a monumental task. Each one spends about five years in dry dock while its parts are assembled. Then it is moved to the dock using a massive ship lift that can handle vessels weighing over 16,000 tonnes. Once in the dock, final adjustments and water tests are performed to make sure everything is working properly. The Astute is designed to be a highly specialized attack submarine. In its torpedo room, it carries and launches spearfish torpedoes that can hit targets more than 40 miles away and Tomahawk missiles capable of striking from over 600 miles. Throughout the construction process, the submarine goes through simulated combat drills to ensure that its systems and crew work together with absolute precision. In the control room, the trajectories and positions of targets are calculated to execute precise torpedo launches. 
During simulations, the crew coordinates every movement and ensures everything is in place, from communications to the exact execution of each launch. Now, let's move on to the part that powers the submarine, its nuclear reactor, without a doubt one of the most critical stages of construction. This reactor, fueled by enriched uranium, uses a chain reaction to generate energy. When the reactor is started, a neutron strikes a uranium atom, causing it to split and release more neutrons, which generates heat. This heat warms water under high pressure, turning it into steam that drives turbines to generate the electricity needed to power the entire submarine. The reactor startup begins at low power and gradually increases until it reaches full capacity, which is enough to power a city the size of Southampton. This process usually takes about two weeks to reach maximum efficiency. Safety is a top priority throughout, and the procedure is closely supervised by experts to ensure everything works correctly. These reactors are built and installed by a team of specialists who do not work at the shipyard as this task is considered highly classified. Once the reactor is operational, the submarine is ready to run on nuclear power independently without needing to refuel for long periods. The process of launching a submarine into the water from a shipyard is a carefully planned operation executed with precision. First, extensive preparations are made to ensure the vessel is fully equipped and ready to withstand marine conditions. Once everything is ready, the maneuver begins with the help of tugboats. These tugboats are essential for guiding the submarine through the narrow channels that connect the shipyard to open sea. Moving the submarine requires precise coordination between the ground team and the tugboat operators. Factors like weather, tides and the width of the channel are all taken into account to avoid any issues. During these maneuvers, the submarine moves slowly to ensure the safety of both the vessel and the workers nearby. Finally, once the submarine exits the channel, a final inspection is conducted to ensure everything is fully operational and ready for its mission. This moment represents the result of years of meticulous work and marks the beginning of the vessel's service life at sea. And that's how the world's most powerful submarines are built. What did you think of the process? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. In the windows you'll see next, there are more videos that might catch your interest. Go ahead and check one out. See you next time.